this is the iPad mini. You can see it everywhere and everybody seems to love it. I picked it up over eight months ago and I had very high expectations. I thought I would use it every day for a ton of different tasks, but I was wrong. And if you ignore the hype around this little thing, is the iPad mini really right for you? Let's find out. When I purchased my iPad mini, I had three big ideas of how I would use it every day. First things first, I love taking pictures on my phone. And the app I use to edit these pictures is Adobe Lightroom. And I love Lightroom, I really do. I use it almost every day, particularly on my iPhone. But there's one thing that I cannot do on my iPhone, which is editing with an Apple Pencil. The idea of being able to use this pen on this iPad to edit pictures more efficiently sounded great. But unfortunately, I realized very quickly that the Lightroom version for iPad is very different than the one for the iPhone. While the iPhone version was optimized for a small screen, the iPad version was not. On the iPhone version of Lightroom, all controls are at the bottom, leaving most of the display for the actual photo. On the iPad version, however, the controls are always fully visible on the right, which is optimized for bigger iPads, but not so much for smaller screens. So in the end, I found that the screen on the iPad mini was simply too small to edit efficiently, and in total, I may have edited four or five pictures. So this expectation definitely wasn't met. Strike one. But at least I had two more really good reasons to use it. I also expected the iPad mini to be the perfect replacement for my Kindle Paperwhite. All iPads run iPadOS, which is of course much better at displaying files like PDFs. It also means that you can install any reader app like an Amazon Kindle or Barnes & Noble's Nook. So this was supposed to be the best of both worlds, but I quickly realized that the backlit display is not a replacement for the Kindle's e-ink display. Reading on the iPad mini in a dark room is absolutely not ideal as there's significant light coming from the display. This is particularly true for someone who shares a bed with another person, but also I imagine it being worse for your eyes generally to look at a real display versus an e-ink display. The mini, despite its small size, is also still a good chunk heavier than a Kindle. The Kindle Paperwhite is about 30% lighter at 205 grams against the iPad mini 6th gen, which is 293 grams. I just wouldn't find myself reading really anything on the iPad ever. Strike two. Not ideal, but at the very least, it will be great for watching stuff, right? I expected that I would use the iPad mini way more to watch all my stuff. I got a ton of TV series that I love to watch and that I usually have downloaded. But once again, it turns out I would not watch them on my iPad mini. I have a 65 inch TV in my living room and a 55 inch in my bedroom. Watching something on the iPad mini just never crossed my mind. Even if I'm in the same room as my fiancée Diana, one of us would just watch something on the TV or on their MacBook. Strike three. But wait, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. In the past eight months, I actually did use the iPad mini for media consumption, but I didn't use it at home. The only time I would reliably use it is when I was traveling, which I do a lot. I spend about half a year every year abroad. And when I do, it often involves long journeys on planes, trains, or buses. This is exactly where the iPad mini started to shine. Particularly on trains and buses where there's no entertainment available, but even on flights, I prefer to watch things on my iPad instead of the in-flight entertainment. Watching something on my own device allows me to use my own headphones. And by the way, shameless plug to my AirPods Pro 2 long-term review linked above somewhere and in the description down below. <laughs> but it also means that I can watch whatever I want. I'm not at the mercy of whatever the in-flight entertainment has, as well as I can watch it on a better screen and I can watch it without interruptions from the in-flight announcement system, which is so annoying. I've just ordered an iPad Pro 11 though to replace it for that very purpose because even for this use case, for me, it wasn't perfect. I'm actually about to make a video about the iPad Pro 11 inch M2, comparing it to my iPad mini and it will be on my channel soon if it isn't already, so go check it out. So clearly the iPad mini was not for me and I will be selling it after I finished working on the videos that I'm making right now. But with so many people loving it, one has to ask who is the iPad mini actually for? I can think of three groups of people for which this device might be perfect. First and foremost, if you are a parent with smaller children, you might absolutely love it. 
Right now, in early 2023, you can find really good deals for just about $400. So it's not overly expensive and it's lightweight enough for even smaller children to hold and watch stuff on. I would say that it is light enough and inexpensive enough for small children to hold it and worst case, even drop it. Given the weight, dropping it on a carpet or otherwise slightly more gentle floor is unlikely to break it. Plus, Apple has great parental controls and a ton of apps designed for small children all around entertainment and education. So it's definitely a great option for keeping kids busy. If you're a student, you may also find that the iPad mini is a great device for taking handwritten notes. Emphasis on handwritten, because while the iPad mini supports the Apple Pencil, it lacks the smart connector that most iPads have, which is required to use official Apple keyboards. The size and weight though means that it's easy to carry around and use in class as well as anywhere else really. Plus, if you really want to, there are some third-party keyboards available that work even without a smart connector. If money is not a consideration though, you would likely find more utility in something like the iPad Pro 11 inch, which I've just ordered as this does come with an official keyboard option, better battery life, as well as a larger and brighter screen. If you are somebody that travels a ton, as in almost daily, let's say you're commuting to work or you're doing business travel very frequently, then the iPad mini would be a great companion. Plus, it is almost pocketable, so you can throw it into any bag without taking any space at all. Battery life is also decent enough to watch your favorite shows or movies for about 6 or 7 hours before it gives in. If we're just talking about the occasional flight, particularly over long distances, I would once again recommend a slightly larger version like the iPad Pro 11 inch instead. I'm honestly surprised how little I ended up using my iPad mini, particularly considering that it does support Apple Pencil. It's a great device, but it is absolutely not for everyone. For me, it wasn't great at photo editing, it wouldn't replace my Kindle, but it was a decent option for media consumption, just not at home. I hope that my experience helps you decide if the iPad mini is right for you. Thank you very much for watching and as always, gotta bounce. Bye!